Good morning. Welcome to worship at Pennside. We'd like to welcome any visitors we have with us either here or virtually. Um, for your convenience, there are visitor and prayer request slips available in the pew racks. I believe Pam has an announcement. Good morning, everyone. Just a few quick updates. Uh, first of all, I wanted to share with you Family Promise. Uh, we had a coordinators meeting this past week on Zoom, and we talked about the past year with Family Promise since they entered into their rental program. So I just wanted to give you an update on that. It's been almost a year since they went into that portion of the program. Uh, right now, there are two families in the program Five families have graduated from the program since they started this new program, either to buy their own places or get their own apartments, so that's a great accomplishment. We talked about advantages and disadvantages of this new rental program, and overall, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Um, the families have a stronger focus on work because of their time flexibility, when they were with the host churches, they kind of had to work within the hours that they were being transported by the van. And this gives them a greater flexibility so they're able to get jobs and keep jobs. They're using life skills and are more prepared for self-sufficiency at the end of the 90-day period. Parenting has improved. Uh, there's been a positive impact on the children. So those were basically the advantages that were discussed. The disadvantages, obviously, the lack of social, socialization with the families, mostly, and that a lot, a lot of that is also due to COVID, plus the normal challenges of families living and working together, especially families that are just kind of, they don't know each other and they're all of a sudden they're living together, such as, you know, cleaning, cooking, those types of things, but they said they are, for the most part, working successfully and have developed friendships with the families um, that they're in the program with. So there are ongoing needs for the families. They're giving them, when they leave their program, they give them, um, they're trying to give them bedding and pillows. So they're always in need of gently used, mostly twin size sheets, uh, some, queen, some queen size sheets, towels, paper products such as toilet paper, paper towels, Kleenex, napkins, and then other items as they host, as churches are hosting that, you know, may come up as far as individual things for the family. So just some things to keep in mind if you're going to be doing any spring cleaning in your linen closets. Uh, we would greatly appreciate any, you know, they don't have to be new, just gently used sheets. Kathy, you have a question? Yes, this is, the, for the past year, through the uh, Berks Coalition to End Homelessness and some other agencies, Family Promise is renting two houses, uh, one on Raymond Street and one on Mead Street. And the one house, Mead Street, I want to say, is large enough that two families are living in it. The house on Raymond Street is, is a one-family home. Um, I've been to both of them. I haven't toured them, obviously, because of COVID, but they're very nice homes, and the families, while they're in the program, they get to live there rent-free, but they do have the responsibility of taking care of a home. So that's another thing that's helping them towards, you know, when they get their own places. So just um, putting on your radar, the next week that Pennside will be hosting will be March 21st to the 28th. They're now going with a Monday to Monday program because they find that the families on the weekends, now that they're in their own homes, they're doing you know errands, whatnot, visiting. So they're asking the churches to go with a Monday to Monday program. And what we're doing is, is dropping off um, any food that we're collecting, gift cards, supplies, whatnot, on a Monday around six o'clock. 
Um, they are still looking, they still like the idea of collecting grocery cards for the families so they can do their own shopping and buy things that we know they're going to eat. Uh, but they are also asking that we deliver a few meals, especially that first night, that Monday night. A lot of times, you know, they may just be getting home from work around six o'clock or so, and if they have a meal that's already prepared, that's something they don't have to worry about doing that night. So the goal that I'd like us to do is to have at least two meals that we deliver when, when we deliver the, uh, the supplies to them that Monday night. Does anybody else have any questions? That's the update. Madeline. March 21st to the 28th. Dave handed me a letter um, just a few minutes ago that we received from the Salvation Army thanking us for our support, our ongoing support of the Angel Chief program. And they said that they were able to provide 14,767 gifts of um, clothing and items to children throughout and seniors throughout Berks County. So that's, that's awesome that they're still being so well supported. And then my last announcement, I'm on the nominating committee this year, and it's that time of the year where we are trying to fill slots on both boards. I think we're in pretty good shape with deacons. We do have some deacons going off, but I think we've got enough volunteers that that board will be, if not filled, like 99% filled. However, we, are ha we do have three elders that are going off session, and we are desperately seeking people who would be willing to take one of the spots on session. So for everybody, there aren't many of us here in person, but for everybody listening, uh, I know some of you have already had some phone calls, but um, if you could greatly think about serving in that way, we would certainly appreciate your help. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Then let us prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. Our hope is in God all of our lives. God has held us since our birth. In love, God saves and supports us. Please join me in the prayer of the day. God of life, death, and resurrection, we are grateful for life and all its gifts. Increase in us the stuff that life is made of, faith, hope, and love, but especially love, that we may abide with you eternally through Jesus Christ, our lover and our Lord. Amen. The deer pants for you, the water 
us to speak the truth even when it is difficult to others but also to ourselves confessing our sin in prayer we dare to speak the truth about ourselves to God who desires to deliver us and cast out fear please join me in the prayer of confession God of life we admit to you and to each other that we have not always lived lives of love we have lost patience and been rude we have been irritable and insisted on our own way. We have even let love end. Forgive us and heal us, dear God, through Jesus Christ, your love incarnate. know only in part we are fully known to God as those who are forgiven full and free let us celebrate this gift by sharing it with one another the peace of Christ be with you
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the incredible gift of Holy Scripture. We give you thanks for this love letter you have sent to us to let us know how much you love us and to show us how we can love you and one another and ourselves. O oh Lord, you know how we have wandered from that way. And so grant now that as Holy Scripture is read by the power of your Spirit, Lord, may that love be kindled in our hearts anew. And may we walk and live as you walked and live. Through Christ, amen. from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 31 through chapter 13, verses 13, verse 13, which can be found on page 174 in the New Testament. But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledges, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. 
then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Our Psalter this morning is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be part to shame, put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually for you. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. Scott and David. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from <clears throat> Luke chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. Jesus has just read the great passage from Isaiah, and then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. 
but he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord, for the gift of your word read, we give you thanks. Now as your word is proclaimed, we pray that insofar as what is said is true, you would write it in our hearts and give us the grace to obey. And insofar as it is false, may it fall to the ground, soon be forgotten, and do no harm. Amen. God is love. So don't be a jerk. Walk in the more excellent way. Paul answers chapter 12's call to overcome division and develop unity. Paul wrote, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. He answers the question of how to, how to overcome division, how to develop unity. He says, And I will show you a still more excellent way. And with that, Paul embarks on one of the most beloved and familiar passages in the whole of Scripture. We hear 1 Corinthians 13 and wedding bells chime. We hear Mendelssohn's wedding march, Bach's Jesu joy of man's desiring, or Wagner's wedding march from Lohengrin, better known as Here Comes the Bride. The music rings in our ears, and we smile as we recall beautiful brides and dashing grooms, family and friends assembled for a celebration of love, some of life's best days. Gently, respectfully, pastorally. I submit to you that Paul was not talking to the Corinthians about marriage. I will show you a still more excellent way is not the Bible's, of equivalent, Bible's equivalent of get me to the church on time. So here's the thing. Gently, respectfully, Pastorally, I confess to you, I who have done weddings here for 18 years, I confess to you that I've had a deeper agenda. I confess to you that the wedding ceremony, the Christian wedding ceremony, has a deeper agenda than simply bringing bride and groom together in matrimony. The wedding ceremony is a service of worship to God. There's a congregation gathered. And the vision of the service broadens in the pastoral prayer. And maybe you missed that, but here's what is said. Grant that all who have witnessed these vows today may find their lives strengthened. And that all who are married may depart with their own promises renewed. Enrich with your grace all husbands and wives, parents and children, that loving and supporting one another, they may serve those in need and be a sign of your kingdom. Grant that the bonds by which all your children are united to one another may be so transformed by your spirit that your peace and justice fill the earth. Does it surprise you to see the focus of the ceremony shift from the couple to the congregation, from the vows that they make to the vows that we have made? And with this shift in perspective from the couple to the congregation, maybe 1 Corinthians 13 is not so out of place as I thought. But again, gently, respectfully, pastorally, I ask you to put the wedding picture back on the shelf, to push the pause button on the music. And listen to 1 Corinthians 13 as a word spoken to a congregation that was not coming together. 1 Corinthians 13 was written to a congregation that was in danger of tearing itself apart. And in this time of great division in our society, it is a word we need to hear, not to us as couples, but to us as a community. Paul pleads with them to walk the more excellent way because they were going down a way of which Proverbs warns. There is a way that seems right to a person, but its end is the way to death. The more excellent way looks like this. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious, or boastful, or arrogant, or rude. 
It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Eugene Peterson put it this way in his paraphrase, the message. Love never gives up. Love cares for others more than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of the truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end, Love never dies. We are living in a time when political division and divisiveness are very high. And the ongoing strain of COVID-19 continues to take a toll, not simply on our health, but on our mental health and our emotional health and our spiritual well-being. And all of this shows in how we are with one another. And Paul's more excellent way is needed. Not love as an emotion, love as a way of life, love as a practice. We cannot control what other people do and how they behave. We cannot control, but we can influence. And the question is, what sort of influence will we have? So for instance, we're at an intersection. The light turns green. But the car in front of us does not immediately leap into motion. And then somebody beeps. How does that feel? How does that feel when someone behind you beeps? How does that feel when you beep? I confess this week, I beeped. How does that feel? What is that doing in us? Love is not irritable. Love doesn't fly off the handle. How's your temper these days? How do you respond to frustration, such as people not wearing masks in public places or your glasses fogging up when you walk into a building because you are wearing a mask? Love doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. How's your score sheet these days? How are you doing with the blame game and finding fault with those with whom you disagree about how the world should be run? Wouldn't it all be better if we were in charge? 1 Corinthians 13 seems like everything that America and Pennsylvania and Berks County is not these days. We are going the wrong way. And we can be part of the solution or part of the problem. And Paul's prescription is not to point fingers at what they should do. Paul's prescription is to remind us of what we can do. Because behind Paul's beautiful words is the good news of how God has been, is, and ever shall be with us. God is patient. God is kind. God is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. God does not insist on God's own way. God is not irritable or resentful. God does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. God bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. God never ends. God is love. And the love that God has for us gives us the capacity to be persons of influence at home, at work, and in the community. Love is kind. Remember how kind God is with you. And be kind at the grocery store. Be kind with the people who are waiting on you. 
Isn't it telling that so many stores now have signs on the door asking us to be kind with the staff? And I wonder, is it our want of kindness that has so many people leaving those jobs, making those jobs even more of a challenge than they were before? And we know the impact. We know how it feels when we witness someone else who is not being kind, someone who, let's face it, is being a jerk. We know how that feels. We know the influence that has. Know that being kind also is an influence. Say please and thank you. Watch the magic happen. Smile at people. Yes, you're wearing a mask, but they'll hear it in your voice. Honor their humanity. Treat them with respect. Simple things. But isn't that what's lacking? Isn't that what we are not seeing wherever we go? Let's make it our mission to bring kindness and appreciation into every encounter we have with someone who is serving us. Bring the love of God to the deli and to the checkout counter. I was at the hardware store Friday getting essential tools that I needed desperately for some reason. And as I was checking out, I was just having a conversation with the clerk. And she was so kind and, and spoke of how she saw Jesus in me. And I didn't do anything special. I just listened to her a little bit and talked to her a little bit. But that encounter made a difference in her day and in her life. That's what we can do. If we just take a little time and a little attention we will make a big difference. We cannot control what other people do, but we can control what we do. We can control how we are. We can be an influence for kindness and patience, for forgiveness and mercy. We can model God's more excellent way and please God. We can help our nation turn from the way that leads to death to a way that leads to life. It's as simple as this. God is love. So don't be a jerk. Walk in God's more excellent way. Amen. Our confession of faith comes from the confession of 1967. Let us confess our faith. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of the human mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful men and women. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, we continue to be deeply grateful for your generosity and want to remind you again that we, as part of the Presbyterian Church, we are part of a, a larger body. And if you have not yet paid your per capita of $43.13, we would appreciate that as we support a ministry that is not only local, but is global. And in fact, as we look to what is going on in Ukraine, know that we are connected and involved in trying to be a positive influence there as well. And so we give you thanks and, and, and are thankful for all that you are giving. With gratitude now, we offer you a minute of peace.
generous God, you have been our rock and our refuge in these challenging times. And we give you thanks for your generosity towards us that has blessed us and provided for us and equipped us for your service. Oh Lord, we offer to you what we have given. We offer to you the gift of our lives, our talents, our time, and our treasure. And we give you thanks, generous God, for all that you have given to us. Grant that through what we have given, your love may be shown and your mercy known. To that end, we dedicate our offerings and ourselves through Christ. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> I have one new prayer request that has come to my knowledge this morning that uh, a family friend has been diagnosed with cancer, and so we want to hold them in our prayers. As well, we can continue to pray for the um, uh, family of Reverend Brubaker, uh, for Barbara Frankovic. I don't have any update on how she is doing, uh, for Pete, Amanda, and Mike Rach as they grave for Jerry, uh, for Guy, and for Paul with uh, dealing with leg surgeries, and so, and also, uh, for the family of Jill Bechtel's co-worker who passed away recently, and uh, Luann Rudnick, the daughter of Gloria Springer, who had cataract surgery on Thursday. And Luann, if you're watching, I hope, I hope all's well. Let's pray. O oh Lord, you are our rock and our refuge. You are our shield and defender, of the ancient of days. O oh Lord, in this time when there is so much instability, when there is so much that seems to be disordered and disrupted, we give you thanks, O oh God, that you are our rock and our refuge. You are our high tower. You are the one to whom we can turn when we don't know where else to turn. And you will hear our prayer. You will answer our cry. You will calm our wounded souls. And so, Lord, we come to you now with those cares and concerns. Lord, you know the cares and concerns of those gathered here. You know the cares and concerns of those watching. Oh, Lord, you know what's on our hearts. Lord, we lift up to you what is going on in Ukraine right now and the threat of war and all that that might mean. And so, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for peace. Hear our prayer for our leaders that they might find a way to step back from the brink, to step back from the abyss, to step back from death and destruction, and to step forward in the path of peace and life. We pray for the people of Ukraine and the uncertainty that they must be feeling and the fear. And for our brothers and sisters in the church in Ukraine. We pray, O oh God, for all of them that they would know your peace and your blessing this day. Oh Lord, we pray again for peace in the Ukraine. And we pray, O oh Lord, for our brothers and sisters in their need. We pray uh, for the family of Reverend Brubaker, for uh, Sue and for... Sarah, Brad, and Bart, we pray, O oh Lord, your comfort and your peace for them. We pray for Pete and Amanda and Mike Rach. We pray, O oh Lord, again, that your promise, the light of resurrection, would be a source of comfort. And for Paul Lucius, he faces surgery, and Guy Haig, as he recovers from surgery, for Hazel Fox, as she continues to rehabilitate, O oh Lord, we pray that your presence would be strength and hope and peace. Oh Lord, we pray as well for Steve Katzenmoyer for his continued recovery. We pray for the family of Jill Bechtel's coworker who passed away recently and again. Lord, in this time there is so much death. Oh Lord, we pray that you would be peace and comfort in that dark valley. We pray, oh Lord, for Barbara Frankoviak and we pray, Lord, that you would Bless and keep her, and that your peace would continue to surround her and the family. 
And Lord, we pray for Luann and we pray, Lord, that all is well. We pray that surgery has gone well and she is on the road to recovery. And Lord, we lift up again before you, loved ones, and lift up my friend as well, Lord, as she's had a hard diagnosis this week. And Lord, we pray that you would be strength when we are weak. You would be wholeness when we are broken. You would be our rock when we are shattered. O oh Lord, our God, hear our prayers this day, we pray, through Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Fill my cup, let it overflow. Friends, we are not dismissed. We are sent to serve. We are sent to serve the needy with an open hand. We are sent to serve the stranger with an open mind. We are sent to serve our neighbor with an open heart. We are sent to serve our Lord, whom we will meet when we serve. And as we go forth to serve, know that we do not go alone. Jesus Christ goes with us, above us to watch over us, beneath us to sustain us, beside us to befriend us, behind us to defend us, before us to show us the way, and always within us, making all things, including us, new. Go in peace. Go with God. Amen. Nice.